was just reading the uh, fourth volume of um, uh, Abai Jolie uh, by Awezov. And there, you know, it, it's really surprising. He describes a pandemic. He describes actually a cholera epidemic in Kazakhstan, you know, uh, at the time. And Abai was actually helping um, to fight this epidemic, uh, you know, by working with, uh, you know, regular people and so on. This is, it could have been written, written yesterday. So I worked on the book for a long time. I worked on it for eight years. And, uh, you know, I, I, I started just by general, not, you know, I just had a general knowledge about what Kazakhstan cinema was about and then went deeper and deeper. And then when I came across some archival resources, uh, and um, and uh, some rare films that are rarely shown, that, that, that are rarely seen. Um, I could see that I think this history needs to be written in a very specific manner in order to do it justice. And so um, I first wanted to write a history of Kazakhstan cinema from the beginnings in the 1920s until today. But that became too big. I mean, the, the book is, is long anyway. It's, uh, it's 450 pages. So... Um, so that, that will be another volume about the cinema of independence, which is, which is really a different book then. Show that in this book, right? So first the development, you know, from the early films, from Aman Gildi um, and so on. And then uh, to the, to the uh, you know, more, um, uh, uh, you know, dr dramatic films of the 1960s and then to the crisis of the 1980s and so on. But also show the continuity of that culture, right? The continuity of that cinema. And, uh, and also the interaction between the different arts, right? So that, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, these artists are all members of one culture. They're all together in one culture. And cinema is part of it, but so is music, so is literature, so is theater, um, and so on. And that I found very, very interesting. And that's what the book is all about. So if I may show it here, so you can see um, uh, the, the um, uh, picture that is on the... Um, cover is from Kuz Zhibiek. And again, Kuz Zhibiek is a film that was made in the late 1960s. Uh, and of course, it is a very un-Soviet film. It was made in the Soviet Union, but it's completely Kazakh. There's nothing Soviet in it, nothing communist, nothing from the Communist Party. It's completely Kazakh. And Kazakhstanis still love that film. Right? They love the actors and actresses. They love the music. Uh, the story itself, and so on. And that's something I wanted to actually um, uh, portray in, in that book. Well, you know, I have to say that um, I spent some years of my childhood in the Soviet Union. Uh, you know, I'm originally from Germany, but my parents moved to uh, Russia in 1969. So I was a little boy there. And I attended a Russian school and uh, not far from where I lived, there was a movie theater that was called Kazakhstan. And so uh, I remember that, uh, you know, I, I went there regularly. I was always interested in movies. And I remember that I watched a film there uh, in Russian. It's called Kanyets Atamana, mm -hmm. which is the end of the Ataman by Shaken Aymanov. Of course, in those days, I didn't know who Shaikhan Amanov was. I didn't know that this film was actually from Kazakhstan or anything specific about it. But I remember that well, I was excited about that film. And so this is my earliest memory of um, a Kazakhstani cinema or Kazakh cinema. And, uh, and so that's like 50 years ago, right? So that, that's quite some time ago. You know, I'm not a political scientist. I'm not a sociologist. I'm not a historian. What can I actually contribute? And since my field is literature and film, I thought I'll, I'll go a little more deeper into um, Kazakhstani cinema. And that became a real fascinating topic, I have to say. And uh, so both in regards to modern uh, Kazakhstani films, like Darijan Amirbaev and others, 
uh, but also then the older ones, right? The films from the 1950s and the 1960s. So I began to research that and that turned out um, to be a real uh, interesting field. And um, I uh, went to uh, Almaty and conducted interviews with a number of directors, um, you know, Adil Khan Yerzhanov, um, uh, Jana Isabaeva, uh, who actually came also here and, and gave talks uh, in our institute. And since you asked about Central Asia and, and maybe general cinema, I have to say that while I have found many interesting films from Kyrgyzstan, from Uzbekistan, uh, still the ones from Kazakhstan, for me personally, were the most interesting ones. So, so I found them to be beautiful, uh, uh, aesthetically fascinating. And uh, so, so this was a natural interest. I didn't have to force myself to do that. This was something that simply brought me closer uh, to Kazakhstan. Uh, a, a strange uh, aspect was that many Kazakhstanis um, actually did not really know that much about Kazakhstani cinema. They liked other films, right? So they thought, oh, you know, we don't have much of this or that. And I thought, no, 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 no. You have actually a very interesting cinema. And I mentioned some films and, and um, I mean, everybody has seen My Name is Koja. Everybody has seen that film, right? Кожа. Измените две буквы, и получится Кожа. А это по-казахски. Каша размазня. Ну, разве я похож на размазня? В общем, когда меня так называют, я спуска не даю. During the Soviet period, right, so from the 1920s all the way to the 1980s, um, Kazakhstani cinema had very distinct national features. So on the one hand, it was Soviet, right? So it had, you know, a certain ideology and so on, a certain communist ideology that it shared with other Soviet republics. On the other hand, it was very profoundly national in its landscapes, in its music, in its emotions. The main person to be responsible for that is Shakir Naimanov, right? So of course there are other um, uh, directors uh, as well, uh, but, but I think Naimanov was the one who really promoted a national perception and a national sensitivity in various genres. I mean, he made comedies, he made dramas, he made historical films, um, but uh, you know, the, the, the Kazakhstani nature of, of his films is beyond doubt. It is, but generally, I would say the cinema of Kazakhstan is a good reflection of its um, social and aesthetic um, sensitivities. For example, the big divide between urban culture and rural culture, right? So, so the, the rural part where, you know, you have a bus taking people to the city. Other than that, it's very quiet and people speak Kazakh among themselves and so on. And then you have the urban culture, which is becoming more and more westernized or is already very westernized and where people speak either Russian or now they begin to speak also, uh, you know, to communicate in other languages. I would say uh, the cinema of Kazakhstan is really a great subject. And I think it's, it's a great cinema. I really believe that both the Soviet part and the, the post-Soviet part. And in the post-Soviet period, you have another divide that's between art house cinema, right? So cinema that really is appealing more to a, um, a relatively small segment of the population, relatively few viewers. Um, uh, so, so the real, as we call them, film buffs, right? Film fanatics. Uh, and so um, these are usually festival films that have success uh, you know, and in national festivals. And of course we have, you know, Baghazin, for example, who now has become a star of festivals. Uh, Yerzhanov, um, who, who has had several successful uh, films at festivals. And then you have the more popular cinema, you know, and, and I'm interested in the popular cinema um, uh, as well, right? So Nurtas Adambay and so on. So, so, so comedies about Kilinka and so on. That, that is also interesting why Kazakhstani viewers uh, you know, want to actually uh, watch these comedies about the life of Kazakhstan. And in these comedies, you also find problems that you find earlier um, in earlier periods about, you know, the 
um, the difficulty of communication between uh, the city and the countryside, right? So you have the same thing. And, and it, you know, this is becoming a real a theme that, that um, both in the Soviet uh, times and in, um, in the post-Soviet period um, is, very, is very prevalent. So all of that I found really fascinating and, um, and, and something that, that I liked um, uh, to research and I continue to actually, um, you know, watch films from Kazakhstan. You know, sometimes it's very hard to find them because, uh, you know, you, know you, you have to go online or sometimes you have to be at a, on a film at a film festival in order to actually see them. But I think that Kazakhstan is a very productive culture. <laughs> I believe that of the various arts, cinema is not the most important for Kazakhstan. I think of all the arts, music is the most important for Kazakhstan. And not just because of Dimash or so, but, but more because Kazakhstanis just love their music, both the folklore and the modern music. And they have so much to do with each other. And, um, and you know, let's say a, co a composer like Nurgisat Lengi, for example, right? So. He, he has composed music that is so national, at the same time, so beautiful and dynamic. Symbiotic uh, connection is between cinema and sports. So, um, you know, you, you have, uh, of course, very, um, uh, you know, prominent uh, 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 athletes in Kazakhstan, boxers like Inadi Golovkin and, and many, many others, you know. Um, and I think that films about sports, films about athletes are actually a very popular or very good topic for Kazakhstani films that I think should be uh, should be pursued. So all of that is interesting for me to observe. I'm happy to find, to discover uh, new films. I just discovered a new one by Yermek Tursunov uh, that he made uh, a couple of years ago, a new film. And so he's a director whom I like very much and I value very highly uh, and a completely post-Soviet director, you know. Uh, so, so this is this is a field that is alive, and that keeps me interested, and that keeps me going. So, I definitely would say, in this regard, um, uh, Kazakhstani cinema is a great topic to to research. Awezov is a great writer. He really is a genuinely wonderful writer. He did a lot for cinema. Uh, so many of the best. Kazakhstani films are based on Awezov stories, uh, including some of his short stories. Um, but Abai is really about the, the essence of the Kazakhstani or the Kazakh nation, right? It's really about what Kazakhstan is all about as a nation, as a national culture. And in this novel, you know, he touches upon so many topics of, you know, the nomadic lifestyle, uh, of um, uh, the, the interaction with other peoples, with the Russians, but also with other people with whom um, the, the, the nomads uh, whom he describes come in touch. The new urban civilization that, that emerges, right? So he describes that. And so, I mean, Abai is, is really a genius who has said so many important things about Kazakhstan that are still valid, you know? So, so for me, it's not just cinema. It is also music. It is also literature. Um, and, and other fields. And even I would say, um, you know, the history of Kazakhstani society in general, right? The Academy of Sciences, that all of this is, is so full of interesting stories, so full of um, fascinating details that I, you know, I keep, I keep watching this, I keep uh, researching that. And, uh, and, and I still discover new things. Like, for example, recently, uh, I discovered a new biography about Shakarim. And Shakarim used to be, you know, seen as a very negative character in the literature. And now it turns out he was much more complicated. He was a great poet. He had a very interesting position politically and so on. So the Shakarim story was new to me. And, um, and I want to know more about that. <music> Kazakhstani culture has a, um, a very symbiotic uh, uh, nature in which the various arts are all interconnected. But I think the most important thing for Kazakhstan is to have its own culture and to maintain it and to protect it and, uh, and to um, guard its traditions 
and develop its traditions. I think that is really the most important thing. So whether a Kazakhstani film gets an Oscar or not, I don't find that really important. You know, I mean, the, the most important thing is that Kazakh viewers uh, go to watch Kazakhstani films. That to me is important. You know, whether uh, you know there is an Oscar or whether the film is is released in other countries, I don't think that really matters very much. So uh, that that to me is is important that. Um, you know, not to neglect, not to undervalue uh, Kazakhstani culture from before 1991, from before independence, but actually to see the pre-independence culture and the independence culture as one continuum. I think that is really important. Mm -hmm.